No. Okay, come in here. Hi, y'all. I thought it was time for a greenhouse tour. It is November 7th, and as you can see behind me, no, I'm sorry, it's November 8th. It is still rocking and rolling in there. Are you joining me on the tour? shut the fan off even though it is what is it in here oh my gosh it's hot what does that say i can't see it 84 degrees Whew. so i'm going to spend some time in the greenhouse today watering and i think i'm going to plant some stuff in this rock wall when joel and i made the decision to sell our house in the suburbs and quit our jobs and move here to our unfinished cabin with our three boys, one who was soon to be graduating. It was really important to us that we were running towards something and not away from something. And I've been thinking a lot about that and because and the reason we felt that way was we didn't want to have felt like we ever made a mistake like when things got hard and thankfully it hasn't been terribly hard i mean it's been a lot of hard work but we didn't want to regret it and feel like we'd made a mistake i hate this waterer watering wand why did he never last so i think that saying never look back Maybe should be revisited. You can look back and should look back, but you should always move forward. Don't you agree? I just have to show you these oranges here. Check this out. Bunch of them. We'll see what happens. Why I think we should look back is to not forget the good and the bad. We should never move backwards, I don't believe, because there were, there's usually always a reason for moving forward, right? There was some problem we were trying to solve, some person we were trying to help something we were trying to build or make you know we did we made these changes for a reason now just like Nina and Joel moving the chickens into the greenhouse not everything oh gosh not all of the solutions we make are the final solutions maybe it's the first step of 10 does it mean that we, if we didn't like our first attempt at a solution, we go back to the way we were doing it before. Because usually I think there are good things that come about, even if it's not the final solution. This um, super sweet 100 cherry tomato didn't do very well in here in the summer because of all the spider mite pressure. Um, but because we're getting so cold at night, the spider mites are, I don't know exactly where they go. I think they dig down into the soil and overwinter there. But so these cherry tomatoes are looking really good. She's a big one. And we're all right here, I guess. They've decided to move over to this lime tree. Can you see all those little dots on that web? They're not terrible right now. Doesn't look like they've done any or much damage. This one, this was one that I put the DE on. But you know, you can't cover every 
tiny inch, tiny centimeter on a tree. So I think I'm just gonna spray it with some water and see what happens. Standing here in this greenhouse is reminding me to do something that really matters to me and to my family. I really just want us all to eat real food. As you can see, the fig is starting to die off for the winter. This was my first year getting figs. I think it took, yeah, so three years. I failed though and didn't use them to their full potential, so I'm kind of bummed about that, but next year I'll, I have a recipe for something I'm gonna do with them, a plum fig jam. But so this will lose all its leaves here in the greenhouse over the winter. And then my plan is, I don't know if we're gonna do it yet this fall or if we're gonna do it in the spring, but my plan is to actually plant it in the ground because right now it's still in a pot. I did come in here, it's been about a week ago now, I think, mm, maybe longer than that. And I cut out some of the tomatoes and pruned back a whole bunch of them. As you can see behind me, I still have a little bit more work to do over here, and I really do need to get this end done because this is actually the end that the blower is on, the blower that's pushing the air down into the tubes. That chicken is still out there in the cold room whining to come in here. Did she lay an egg in here or something once? I actually did get one small, I don't know, I guess I got a couple. Antelopes up here. I'll show you that. But as bad as the spider mites were up in this north bed, I didn't think I'd get anything. And I kind of just left the, the cantaloupe plants in here to use as a trap crop to keep them back here. And then I would throw DE on it and water it. And I was kind of trying to attract them all here and then eliminate them. Did it work? I don't know. I have no idea. But this was the one little cantaloupe that I did get. Poor thing. Really had to work hard. I should probably save those seeds. Here's a lemon tree that you can see is starting to lose its leaves. Now, when I watched the video Russ's video, you know, the greenhouse, the famous greenhouse in the snow video. Um, I thought everything would just stay all year round, stay alive and um, not go dormant. And I don't know if it's the trees we picked, but that has not been the case for us. Here's a, everything I don't know about trees, fruit trees. I think they have to go through a winter, a chill, to keep producing fruit again. This is a zucchini. Oh, I have one flower in here. I should pollinate that. And I just have been hand pollinating the zucchini and the squash. Oh, that's hard to believe. I have one female flower and no male flowers. Like that never happens. Usually I have six males. Yeah, usually I have six males leaves and no females, so I don't know where my paintbrush is, <clears throat> and I only have one flower, so I'm just going to use this one to pollinate the female. Sometimes the male flowers don't have a ton of pollen on them, and I feel like when that happens, I won't get, you know, a big zucchini. Maybe I'll get a little one that doesn't rot, but you know, if they don't get pollinated, they just kind of shrivel up and rot on the plant. Here, I'll show you. For those of you maybe who haven't seen a little zucchini, oh, to know which one is the female and the male. So see this flower, looks like it has a little zucchini, like a mini zucchini here on the bottom, that's its stem. And the flower, the inside looks like that. 
And then when you have a male flower, there's a little one. The stem is just a skinny flower or stem and the inside just looks like that. When they don't get pollinated, so this is a squash that I'm gonna pull out, a squash plant I'm gonna pull out today. When they don't get pollinated, you see this was the flower that was at the end, how it died and then the, the squash just shriveled up. That one didn't get pollinated. We are past the season of pollinators. So I'm gonna pull that out just because it doesn't look very good. And I'll keep pollinating, hand pollinating the zucchini as long as the flowers show up, which last year was probably like around Thanksgiving that I stopped seeing flowers. It must have been consistently cold enough um, for it to stop flowering. And you'll notice that we do, we grow different things in our greenhouse than the greenhouse and the snow people do. We have some of the same things, you know, there's citrus trees, but I was really, or I should say, we were really using it as a season extender for produce. When I look back on it, sometimes I think, well, did I need to buy this kit to do that? I might have just been able to, it might have been just as good to have a high tunnel that, because I know there are still people up here in zone three or in northern Minnesota that are growing things in their greenhouses. I believe it's things like uh, roots and brassicas, which we also have in here, but um, I don't think, uh, maybe I'm wrong. I'd love to hear if you are growing tomatoes and cucumbers in a high tunnel right now in Northern Minnesota or anywhere in zone three. I will admit when we started searching around for a greenhouse, the idea of growing food year round and growing, you know, the citrus and the, you know, the tropical stuff, that really appealed to me. <clears throat> it's not as easy as that. <laughs> I'll just say that. We're getting better and better at it every year, but um, it has been a huge learning curve. We've made a lot of mistakes. I've missed a lot of planting deadlines. I've let, I've started so many seeds and trays and they just, for nothing, anybody else do that? I can't be the only one. So that kind of leads me back to what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Moving forward. You know, we did things for a reason in here. And sometimes I forget those reasons because I've eliminated a part of the problem. So that's why I think moving forward in anything is so important. Look back, yes, absolutely look back. Don't move back always move forward. And if somebody suggests to you that you should be moving backwards, question that because back there we found problems, right? There were things that we decided we needed solutions for. And yeah, we don't get it right the first time every time or even the second or third. I'm trying to think of a time when moving backward for me was ever A good idea. What are you doing out there? Why are you back there? Are you laying it in back there? I got some carrots and spinach back here that I think very soon I will really cut down these tomatoes here. Right now I'm using it for shade so that the carrots seedlings don't get super dried out. 
and that the spinach doesn't bolt. All these things I think I know. <laughs> I'm just making it up as I go. Just thought I would show you some of the fruit that's still in here. So these are a early cherry. Apparently they're a late cherry also. This is a Thorburn's lemon tomato. They've been pretty small, but delicious. And they were one of the first tomatoes to come on and they're still going. This is my favorite, the terracotta. What is this one? Oh, this is a black crim. The black crim didn't really start coming on until the end of the season for me. So they might not be a great greenhouse tomato. This is called a Monotara, Monotara. It's a Japanese variety. I finally got to taste one the other day and it is probably the most delicious tomato I've ever tasted. It was so good. This is one that I tried that lean and lower. I can't find the tag. Oh, yeah. Well, this is also a terracotta. I tried the lean and lower um, technique where you see how it's on a string here. You kind of unwrap it from the bottom and then you pull it down a little bit and lean it on the ground. And when I did that, it broke. It actually cracked it over here. So I just pushed it all down in the ground or down on the ground, hoping it would just kind of root from the stem. And this plant kept going. Doesn't look the healthiest because I think there's some spider mite damage, but there's the fig going dormant. Those are my rutabagas. You can see in there, they're looking beautiful. I did see some aphids on here, just a few. And so I sprayed them off with the water. These are the beets. It is really sunny in here. I'm sorry if this video isn't great. And there's my cucumber trellis that we have probably harvested, uh, I don't know, 200 pounds of cucumbers off of. I've been putting DE on this. Oh, I see I have some here to pick. Oh, I'm going to leave that there for a minute. Yeah, you know, some of these are getting too big, but these are the little snackers that we like so much. There's cucumbers everywhere. And more coming. I really like this trellis that I made here. I'm going to do that again next year. Here are the peppers. There's some cayennes back there. Let's see if I can... You can see they're still flowering. And these are shishitos. Can you see those? We are back to the cherry tomato. And oh, I do have, so this trellis was meant for more cucumbers too. You can see I have a few there. Um, there were more cucumbers on this trellis over here, but the spider mites got them. I did get quite a few cucumbers off of them though. And these are the cabbages, cauliflower, and broccoli that Owen and I transferred from outside. I see I have some broccoli to pick. I had already picked the main stem off of some of these broccoli. So I've got so I've got side shoots coming up now. 
but I should pick those so they keep producing. They don't like it really hot. So that's part of the reason I'm coming in here during the day and opening it because otherwise they just kind of get droopy and I don't want them to bolt. <clears throat> but it's only, what did I say, it was 84 in there. So I think that'll be fine. editing this video I realized I had an audio problem at the end and I didn't really get to finish my message and all that is to say is we all make mistakes Joel and I I feel like are at the top of the list of making mistakes I hope nobody judges us for that because we definitely aren't judging anyone else for their mistakes and anyway our biggest successes have followed some of our biggest failures so Thanks again for watching. If you're new here, we hope you'll subscribe and we'll catch you next time.